So th this is my heartbeat. Um, right now, live, um, I'm wearing a heart rate monitor. And it's, it's a little bit higher than usual. Uh, <laughs> it, it's usually around 60. <laughs> uh, th th this is fine, this is fine, this is fine. Uh, it's going up. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, let, let's put this in perspective for, for, for a bit. Um, so, still going up. <laughs> um, so last week I did a conference in, in Oslo and we had an amazing trip for the speakers. We went to see the Northern Lights. And that is me. That was fantastic. Um, but unfortunately, on the way back, we, it was kind of slippery. And our car started skidding a bit on the road. And then we went almost into a barrier. And then we ended up in a, well, in a ditch. So we were all right. No problem. Except uh, when I got back to the hotel, I was kind of curious how high my heartbeat was during the accident. And it's only around 85. So this is quite high. Uh, and it's doing this talk with hardware demos again, uh, that is way scarier than being in a car accident. Um, so we had talks from Stephanie today, we had a talk from uh, Sebastian, and they all had hardware demos and they all worked. So by the rules of the demo gods, mine must fail. Uh, that there is no way I can fix that, but I'll, I'll try to make the good ones work. Uh, so I did this talk in, in England last year and, and uh, none of them worked. <laughs> So right now we have a heart rate monitor that's actually working, so this is already good. So, yay. Um, just to prove that this is real life, my heartbeat, and I'm not just telling stories, uh, I'm going to take it off. Uh, um, yeah, it's, it's fine, it's fine. Um, I, I'm not actually dead, but... <laughs> All right, um, so let, let's start with the actual talk. So this talk is fun with Bluetooth. Um, the first question I always get is, why? Well, uh, because I'm not really good into figuring out how USB plugs into computers. Um, it always takes at least three, four, five times. Um, so I thought I'd go with wireless. But seriously, why? Um, so progressive web apps. Progressive web apps are great. Uh, you get offline support, you get an app-like experience, you add to home screen. And for many things, PWAs offer an equivalent or even a better experience than native apps. But there is one thing that PWAs can't do. They are bound to what the browser can do. So they are great for talking to servers on the internet, but not so great for talking to devices you have at home. To do that, you need native apps. But I don't want to, re I don't want to download a 500 megabyte app on my phone, or the app is really crappy, it was built 10 years ago, or it doesn't work anymore, never updated for the latest version of Android or iOS, or I just want to use my laptop in my desktop instead of a phone, and they only build a mobile app. So there are many technologies that you can use to talk to devices. Well, USB was one of them. Um, that actually works pretty good, but a lot of other technologies are not suitable for the web. So for example, even though Wi-Fi devices uh, usually expose a web server, you could connect to from a web app. They are often HTTP only, and good luck connecting to that device using HTTPS 
only progressive web apps. So I could, in theory, build a web app for controlling my ULite, because it has a web server, or controlling my Sonos, because it has a web server. But both will not work, because they are HTTP. But there's one technology out there that's ideal for devices. It's low energy, it's cheap, and there are millions of devices already out there using this technology. So there's now a web app uh, that you can use to talk to those devices. And I'm talking about Bluetooth, of course. And I know, I know, I know, the first thing everybody always says when they start talking about Bluetooth, Bluetooth, um, uh, yeah, Bluetooth sucks. It's slow, it's limited range, sparing, it's a 20-year-old technology based on 20-year-old standards. But then you're thinking about classic Bluetooth. That's the reason everybody hates Bluetooth. But Bluetooth Low Energy is actually a modern standard. So it's known under many names, like Bluetooth Smart or Bluetooth LE, BLE, Bluetooth 4, Bluetooth 5. And if you're wor worried about range, for example, the maximum range that they got Bluetooth 5 working is more than a kilometer between devices. And 10 million devices ship every single day, like mobile phones, computers, but also more uh, practical medical applications like glucose monitors. Uh, they come in Bluetooth uh, versions. And we have activity trackers, heart rate monitors, and IoT devices like light bulbs, uh, and even toys like cute little robots or drones or fidget spinners or, yeah, forget about that one. <laughs> So, but first, first, we're going to have to talk about the boring theoretical stuff um, about Bluetooth itself. And Bluetooth is in the web standard, uh, so things are a little bit different. So when we're talking about Bluetooth devices, we have central devices and we have peripherals. A central device can talk to a peripheral or can connect to a peripheral, but a peripheral can't connect to a central device. So it's one way for connecting, and then you can exchange data. A central device can connect to multiple peripherals at the same time, but the peripherals among themselves can't talk to each other. They could relay messages using the central device, but that is something you have to write yourself. And we're not talking about just Bluetooth devices in general, we're talking about a very specific profile called the Generic Attribute Profile. And it has a very obvious abbreviation, uh, GATT, because apparently GAP was already taken. And now we're no longer talking about uh, central devices and peripherals, we're talking about clients and servers. So your light bulb is a server. But if you think about it, it kind of makes sense because the light bulb offers a surface light. So it is a server. And a client, well, just like your browser is a client, talks to servers on the internet. The client, your progressive web app or your uh, native app on your phone, talks to the server in the light bulb. So a light bulb offers services. One of them is light, of course. Um, that is not a standard uh, service, but there are also standard services specified by the Bluetooth specification, like device information, which tells you uh, manufacturer or model, or, and so on. So a drone might have, again, device information and battery information, because drones run on batteries, and you might want to know when the battery dies. Um, and we have flight control. A cute little robot has device information, battery again, and steering control. And device information and battery are standards, but steering control and, and flight control were not standards. So that differs between manufacturer and even model sometimes. So the heart rate monitor, uh, well, that has device information, battery, and heart rate, which is a standard. But of course, if you buy a cheap one, it's not going to have device information, it's not going to have battery service, and the heart rate is something they just invented this themselves. So this can get a bit tricky. A little bit more expensive one does have all the standard services. 
Um, if you look at one of those standard services, you're going to have characteristics inside of them. A characteristic is one property of that device information, uh, uh, or, or a, a property of that service. And we can have multiple characteristics for each service. So we can have manufacturer, we can have model number, serial number, and so on. Um, and each of these characteristics can have values. So it's kind of like uh, the server is kind of like an array of objects, and the service is an object in that array. The characteristic is kind of like a property of that object, and they have a value. Kind of similar. It, it's not that simple, but, but basically it comes down to this. And we know how do we work with objects and arrays and properties and values. Uh, so this is basically the same thing, only it's a bit more verbose and you have to write more code to do it. So services and characteristics are identified by UUIDs and they are 16-bit or 128 bits. And they look like this. Uh, so device information is 180A and battery is 180F. And your lights, which isn't a standard, doesn't have a fixed UUID. They had to choose that themselves, and it can differ between manufacturer and model. Now, they must steer out of the standard range, but nobody does this. So everybody uses a 16-bit UUID, and there may be some collisions there. So instead of looking like this, it actually looks like this. So this is really bad for readability and figure out how things work. It's actually very good for Bluetooth itself because Bluetooth has low bandwidth and sending just numbers is easier than sending complete strings. So if you have one of those characteristics, you can read from them, you can write to them, and you can get notified of changes. And every value is an array of bytes. There are no fancy data types, it's just bytes. So, phew. Uh, that was the boring part. So how does this look? So I have an app uh, on my phone, and I can actually connect to a device. I can inspect all the characteristics and all the services. So I connect it to a light bulb. And there are a proper, uh, there are a couple of services like device information, and there is battery service, and the level is at 90%. Fine. But there's also a, custom, uh, a number of custom services with a lot of characteristics, and I don't know what each of those do. Uh, but I'm particularly interested in one of them, the top one. That is four bytes. So what if I change one of those bytes? For example, if I change the value to 00FF0000, then the light bulb turns red. Hmm. Interesting. So what if I change it to 0000FF0000? It turns green. Hmm. Let's try 00000FF. It turns Blue, yeah. It turns blue. So this is our RGB values. We can make basically every color. But what if, what if you change the first byte? What happens then? FF000000. It turns white. So there are four LEDs in this light bulb. And each of those LEDs can be controlled by one byte. By one can change the intensity of each of these LEDs by changing the value of that byte. So this is really close to what we know, like colors in HTML and JavaScript. So this, this, is, this is good. So this has been boring facts about Bluetooth. Uh, yeah. So now it's time for fun with Bluetooth. Finally, finally. Um, but first. Uh, the API. Uh, I have to talk a bit about the API that is actually in browsers. So we need to be able to connect to a device. And to do that, we need to call 
a function called navigator.bluetooth.requestdevice, similar to what Sebastian explained with uh, WebUSB. And we provide a couple of filters to make sure we can connect to the right device. Um, because we don't want to list all of the Bluetooth devices, that there's, there are way too many. And we specify which services we're going to use. So when we execute this function, a dialog pop up, pops up. And all the devices that uh, uh, conform to the filters we've set will be listed there. And now the actual the user has to physically, on the computer, click that device and pair with it. So this, this is security, because we don't want to have uh, our browser just sniffing all the devices in our network and connecting to a light bulb and, and turning the lights on and off because somebody thought that was funny. So once the user clicks on the pair button, we get a property of uh, a promise back. And that, with that promise, we can actually get to the data. But promises are so 2017, uh, we now have async await, and that works even better. So we can await request device, and we get the device. And then we can await connecting to the GATT server and get the server. And then we can await getting the primary service, which is specified by the UUID, and we get a service. And finally, we get the characteristics, again spe uh, specified by the U UUID, and we get the characteristic. And now we have the characteristic, and we can actually start doing stuff with it, like writing data. So you call write value on the characteristic with those bytes. And in case of a light bulb, it's just four bytes. So we can specify an RGB value. And for reading data, we can just call read value on the characteristic and await that, and we get a value. And we can pull out those individual bytes again. And I mentioned getting notified of changes. That is also possible, and for a light bulb, that isn't really useful. But if you wear a heart rate monitor, for example, that is really useful because I want to know when the heart rate changes so I can update it on the screen. So it's kind of like add event listener. No, it actually is at event listener uh, with the value, characteristic value changed, and we have a callback, and we can get to the data again. But we must not forget to actually start notifications, because otherwise it won't work, because bandwidth, again, is limited, and we don't want to flood the network with unnecessary packets with all the data, unless we actually want it. So the things you need to know is the Web Bluetooth API, which the, uh, I pretty much explained to you in the last 20 minutes. Um, and that's about 90% of the API. So all of the, the, the demos I, I created are all using what I showed you. And we need to know promises, of course, or async wake and types arrays. And those are now standard JavaScript uh, features. So before we go on, we need to talk a bit about, well, browser support. So right now, it's supported in Chrome, it's supported in Opera, it's supported in uh, Samsung Internet on Android phones. And it is in Servo builds. And kind of what, the what is developed in Servo, it's kind of like a development platform for, for Firefox tend to end up in Firefox, so that is a good thing. Um, and it works in iOS. Uh, well, uh, not, not in Safari. Um, but there is a browser on iOS called WebBLE that supports this API. And it's supported in uh, Electron, it's supported in Node with a package, Node Web Bluetooth. It's supported in Cordova, if you still use that. Um, and it's supported by Esperino, which is really interesting because uh, Esperino is a JavaScript interpreter that runs on microcontrollers, really, really small microcontrollers. And you can build your own stuff with this. 
Now, I did encounter some issues. I mentioned that not all characteristics were standardized. Um, so I did buy, I bought a whole box of Bluetooth LED bulbs. And this is the most sane one. We've already gone over this. This is just four bytes. It's really simple. But some of them are not this simple. Um, it's still not that bad. But um, for example, this one, it has five bytes. So we have RGB and then two more. And for every color, there is a switch to turn it on and off. And the order for RGB is really unconventional because it's GBR. I don't know. Uh, and why would you need switches? Because if you set the intensity to zero, it's already turned off. Yeah. Still, it's simple. So this light bulb is a little bit more difficult. It's um, every single byte has to be exactly like this, otherwise it won't work. And there has to be a random number in there, because no two messages can be the same. Um, then you have to calculate the checksum, because Bluetooth doesn't do that. Well, of course it does, but, but well, we'll just do it again. Um, yeah, but th th this, is, this is OK. So I also brought this little LED matrix. This is basically 64 light bulbs. 64 LEDs, and you can turn, uh, change the color of each of these LEDs by changing, uh, well, uh, sending a message with the position, which one are we going to change, and the color. It's kind of pretty much the same as a light bulb. So this is really simple. But I also have another one, and that is a little bit more difficult. This, this is still pretty OK. But then we add to, have to add some extra code and some more code. And yeah, this is just to change one of those LEDs. So you're probably not going to figure this out just by looking at the actual values. Um, so you need some extra help. So what you can do is sniff the Bluetooth network and actually look at the packets that are being sent from the native app to your device. And it sounds really bad. And it is. Because that means there is no security. Uh, so they fixed that. This only works for Bluetooth 4.0. For older devices, or for newer devices, this won't work. Um, but it is still possible to get to that same data by uh, using an Android phone and turning on Bluetooth logging. And you can use ADB to transfer that to your computer, and then you can look at it with Wireshark. And you can actually see the bytes that are being generated by the native app, and you could mimic that. But some of the devices I looked into were, well, even too complicated for that. So it is possible, please don't tell anybody, it is possible to decompile APKs and look at the source code and get inspired by it. Let, let's call it inspired. <laughs> yeah, inspired. Um, that works really well, but don't, don't tell anybody. So now it's time for finally for the fun part. But um, I have to give a warning, because it's still experimental technology. Um, things will probably go wrong. I just hope it's going to be the bad demos and not the good demos. <laughs> and well, it works at home, because at home I don't have Wi-Fi interference. And on a, on a conference, there are so many people with Wi-Fi devices, and they use the same frequency as Bluetooth. So it's, yeah. So 
let, let's, let's just get on with it. So, first, I need to do this. All right. So, let's take a deep breath. Here we go. I'm going to change the colors of a light bulb. And I can connect to this light bulb by clicking the connect button, pairing with it, and clicking a color. And immediately, the light bulb changes color. So there's nothing in between. It's just from the browser straight to the light bulb by sending those four bytes. Now, if I change the bytes I'm sending, it turns green or blue, yellow, black. Uh, yeah, uh, that doesn't work. Uh, <laughs> Um, so, what else can we do with this? Um, well, I could use CSS, purple, or navy. Uh, it kind of feels too simple. Um, You know what? Let's try CSS animations. So we have CSS animations running on a light bulb. Um, yeah, I, I thought this was really cool, but it. It is actually kind of cheating because the CSS animation is running in a browser. And I just pick out the colors from the browser and send it to the light bulb. So it's kind of like cheating, but it's still pretty cool. So what else do we got? Well, I brought the matrix. I mean, I'll quickly do a little demo with that. It's going to be really hard to see. Uh, especially from, from up there. Um, but I'll, I like to procrastinate and by drawing cute little monsters. Like this. Um, it's, it's just fun. Um, But I also brought something else. And to show this, I'm going to need to clear up this table a bit. Um, let's put this down. I brought a Lego car. And this usually has an infrared re receiver. But I changed it into a Bluetooth receiver, which you can also buy in a store, but, but not from Lego. It's a third party. And then you can connect to it. And you can actually start, start driving it. So this table is really small. <laughs> so this is actually really dangerous. <laughs> My four-year-old son would never forgive me if I crashed the thing and it wouldn't work anymore. <laughs> but this is just... Um, so, what else can we do with this? Uh, we had CSS animations on the light bulb. Could we use CSS animations on this? Yeah. <laughs> so, I prepared something. 
and I have a keyframe or, or keyframes. Uh, it's called track, and it uses CSS variables for directions. And it is left, right, left, right, forward, reverse. I'm going to change that. Uh, I'm not going to do the forwards and reverses here. Uh, let's quickly change that. So if I enable this animation, it's going to start driving by itself. Hopefully not into the stuff I put there. Yeah. A self-driving car. <laughs> yeah. let, let, let's just... Let's try something else. I also brought a Lego head with me. And inside of that head is a device called a Nordic thingy. That's actually a device that has a lot of sensors, like a gyroscope, but also temperature and air quality and, and, and so on. Um, and if I calibrated a bit. I can now pick it up and it follows the movements I make. So basically I, I used the uh, gyroscope to figure out the position inside of the head and translate that to ooh, something went wrong there. And translate that into well WebGL transforms. And we could use this to, well, we could use that to control the car. So I'm going to connect to the second device now. So I've made connections to two different devices from the same page. Now if I, <laughs> oh, this, this is going to end badly. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> All right. <laughs> so I always tell my four year old son that uh, I'm going to be careful. Uh, but if I crash, you can always fix it again. That, that's the beauty of Legos. Um, so I'm going to put it on the ground now. And if you have a recent Android phone, you can go to this URL and connect to the device. And the first one that does this has control over the car. <laughs> Straight from the browser on your phone to the car. So. In the meantime, I'm going to do a quick demo with a receipt printer. And uh, Sebastian already showed a receipt printer. Uh, <laughs> not broken. Ah, good. Um, so the receipt printer is not a USB printer, but it's a Bluetooth printer. And I kind of wrote a driver for it because it supports a, a printer language called ESCPOS, which is almost 30 years old. Um, um, so I basically wrote a printer driver. And now, uh, when somebody tweets about Dagfest, it's going to print that tweet on the printer. I'm just going to leave it on. Um, 
Because, well, my time is almost up. Uh, well, that's not true. I'll have some time to do something else. I also brought with me an Espruino. Um, ah, it works. Uh, an Espruino microcontroller. And it is really tiny. It's just less than two centimeters by one centimeter. And it has a Bluetooth chip uh, by Nordic Semiconductors. And this is not distracting at all. Um, <laughs> and that Bluetooth chip is fast enough to run JavaScript. So I'm going to connect it to a battery. And then nothing happens. That is supposed to happen. Uh, so, I have the Esprino uh, IDE here, and then I can connect to this device. And there it is. Now, once I'm connected, I can write JavaScript and push it to the device. Now, I already built a little uh, application. It's less than 80 lines of code, and it basically sets the device up to advertise as a light bulb. And it offers these services, and they may seem familiar because they are the same services as this light bulb. And I make sure the characteristic is readable, I can make it writable, and use those bytes and set the color. And then I make the colors sparkle. So I change the colors randomly a bit, and it turns some LEDs off. And then we have like a candle effect. So it's just eight lines of code. I'm going to upload that. It's uploading to the device. And then it works. Just by writing 80 lines of code, we created a light bulb. Just that, that, that's just amazing to me. So what we could do with this is we can try to put it away. Well, that's not going to work because there isn't room enough. Just put it like this. So we have our Bluetooth connected, JavaScript running candle. And I'll disconnect now. And, uh, who is doing that? <laughs> Somebody connected to the. <laughs> yeah. So let's try to change this color. <laughs> that works. Uh, we can run CSS animations on it uh, again. Whoa, rainbow. CSS animations on a candle. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I'll leave this on. And I'll leave this on. And now I have, well, just one more demo. Well, uh, so. I mentioned drones, right? <laughs> I brought one with me. But this is really dangerous. So I have to wear safety goggles. And those safety goggles are also Bluetooth connected. So I'll just put them on. Warning, danger. Uh, but actually, it, it is really cool because I can also use uh, uh, this to visualize audio. <laughs> so every time I speak, the, the equalizer shows my voice, and it really works. <laughs> so, danger, danger. Um, uh, actually, I can't see anything uh, with this glass on, so I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll put this off. But um, 
the drone. So this, this is usually the, the, the most dangerous part. Um, and sometimes it doesn't work. It takes a little while to boot up. So when I first tried this at home, I killed some plants. Uh, my, my wife wasn't that happy about it. And there's a little Lego guy on top, and he almost got decapitated. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's kind of tricky. And, um, so, it doesn't connect. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can fix that. There it is. All right. You may notice there's this big red button there called emergency. It's there for a reason. So if I start flying and I inadvertently fly into the audience, I press that red button. And then it will drop down on top of you. <laughs> um, well, at least the motors won't be spinning, so that's a good thing. Um, so let's put that here somewhere safely. <laughs> um, let's see if it works. Please don't drive into me. <laughs> Let, let's try again. There it goes. So we can go a little bit further up. Safer for me. Um, it's pretty stable. Let's fly. Not into the wall. Um, this is really hard to see. No, the other way. So, there's a trick I can do. Ooh. Okay, uh, let's just land. So everything I showed you, that was just straight from the browser to the device. And to me, that is just amazing that that is possible at all nowadays. And if you're interested in this, um, the manufacturer of the Nordic thingy gave me a couple of thingies to give to people who want to build something their own. So this is just basically a sensor device. It has a gyroscope, like I used in the demo, but all kinds of other devices. It has an LED, and you can play with it using a progressive web app that they built. But you can also build or connect to it yourself and build something yourself. And as a bonus, you can flash this to an Esperino, so you can actually run JavaScript on it. So if you want one, I only have three with me. If you want one, come up to me, and well, the first three are going to get one. Um, so that's it for me. Uh, this, well, the, it, this is fun, but it also has really practical and useful applications. And uh, well, your imagination is basically uh, uh, what's stopping this from being an awesome technology. So, thank you all.